when I hear emboldened moderates, I think, well, that doesn't sound like a very scary prospect. Uh, but what exactly do you think could be some of the legislative uh, or policy items that get done here? Well, look, it's 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 not a scary prospect. The question is whether it's a real prospect. But look, I'm trying to be optimistic here because you look at the alignment that's emerging from this election. You have an angry election, divided government, probably a Senate under Republican control, barely a reduced Democratic majority in the House and probably a Democrat in the White House. And that looks like maybe a recipe for gridlock. But one of the things that can happen in Washington when power is evenly divided is that everybody is forced to move to the center and that moderates in the center suddenly have more leverage because they can tip the balance. It's very finely balanced. They can tip it one way or the other, particularly if you have moderates in the Senate who get together from each party and create a bipartisan uh, team in the middle that forces leaders uh, to move to that middle. And that's at least a possible outcome of this power alignment. And it means that a President Biden certainly couldn't uh, enact the progressive agenda that a lot of people in the Democratic Party's left want. But Joe Biden didn't really want to get pushed that far left anyway, so he can use this kind of an alignment as a check on the left wing of his own party. Um, you know, maybe there's too much bitterness for this to work out that way, but that's certainly the way it has worked out in the past in Washington. I guess my question is, if it if that's kind of the the impetus, where is it going? So, you know, it, it's pretty obvious. I mean, we've heard some of the talking points about what a bigger Democratic majority would do. Um, if it's a, a purple Congress, so to speak, what exactly do they want to get done? Does that just mean compromise on a COVID bill of something in the range of, I don't know, high hundreds of billions, a trillion, whatever the figure is? But what else would it imply beyond that? Well, that, you know, that, that depends on, a little bit on, on how assertive these people in the middle are. But, for example, it probably means you can have a deal, an uh, infrastructure deal of some significance, of some consequence, because there is bipartisan support for that. You can probably make that a somewhat greenish um, infrastructure bill, not as green as the Green New Deal, but both parties want to move in that direction a little bit, or at least people in the center do. You can probably, you can't in, enact the entire Biden, you know, roll back the Trump tax cuts plan, but you can probably work out something on taxes um, that's a little more progressive than than the current structure. Um, and there are some things like DACA, you know, the, the dreamers, the um, the young immigrants brought here as children uh, by their parents. Both parties want to find a common sense solution to that. Uh, it's out there to be done. So you can have things like that that happen. What can't happen? Well, you can't have a giant rollback, as I said, of the Trump tax cuts, probably under that alignment. You can't have a Green New Deal. Um, and you probably can't do any of the more extreme things that the, some of the Democrats have wanted, like, for example, let's start to abolish the Electoral College. One of the reasons I think, Kelly, that the, the markets have reacted well to this alignment is that this is kind of a, a move in a small band in the middle alignment uh, that markets tend to like. They don't like to be taken by surprise and they yeah. don't like you know, radical movements. And you're not going to get that out of this alignment. And finally, do you agree with everybody who's saying that this makes Speaker McC or Leader McConnell very powerful? Um, because I guess I can understand their point on the one hand, but again, it it might be a lot of power to wield over doing not a whole lot. Yeah, I think that's right. But what it does do is it means senators like Joe Manchin of West Virginia and the Democratic side and Susan Collins of Maine on the Republican side, moderates who've been kind of pushed to the side in the in the ideological battles now suddenly can come into play. And the other thing to keep in mind here is that the Mitch and Joe show can be back on, you know, the in the Obama years when there were problems, particularly coming to agreement on budget matters. Uh, President Obama sent Joe Biden up to the hill and he sat down with Mitch McConnell and the two of them being basically Senate tech politicians figured out a way to get something done. You can have a revival of that. Um, and that has been at least a, a productive uh, lineup in the past. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.